everyone. I'm Miss Toby, and I'm coming to you from our festive um, holiday corner here at South Charleston Public Library. This today, I'm coming to you for a craft tutorial for one of the crafts we talked about last night um, in our Family Fun Fest program. If you've not seen that program, you can watch it on Facebook or on YouTube. Um, and I'm going to walk you through one of the crafts that we showed you guys. So last night, we read um, Rabbit Snow Dance, which is a traditional Iroquois um, story. And in that um, story, Rabbit had a drum. And we didn't make drums, but we did make tambourines. Um, so I'm going to show you how to make a tambourine. But first, I'm going to go over what you need. You need either two paper plates or two paper bowls. And the difference between plates and bowls is how your tambourine is going to sound. We'll talk a little bit about that as we get there. You will need um, a hole punch, if you have one, or a pair of scissors will work, but make sure you get your adult to help you with this project, okay? Some yarn, and then you also need something to, to fill your tambourine with, um, and it can be anything small. Um, you can use rice, you can use beans, like dry beans, don't use like a can of beans, but like dry beans. Um, you can use beads, which is what I'm going to use today because we just have a bunch of those here at the library. Um, and you can use anything that is small that will fit between your two plates and will make a rattling sound when you when you shake it. Um, also, if you don't have a hole punch and yarn, you can use a stapler. That's just fine. And we'll go over how you can do that. Um, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my two plates and I'm going to hold them together like this. So it just looks like one. And I'm going to stape, I'm going to hole punch at least four holes on it. Okay. And they're going to be spread out kind of evenly. So I'll show you how we're going to do that. I'm going to take the hole punch and we're just going to punch it through right like that. See, so there's one. And then we're going to turn it about a quarter. We're going to do it again. Boop, two. And then again. And doing this first um, just helps because you don't want to do it after you try to put your beans and stuff in there. Um, like I said, it's a careful process, so just we'll get through it together. Okay. And right there, last hole punch. Um, so now I'm going to take my plate and I'm going to place it flat on the table in front of me. I don't know if you can see that, but that's what I'm going to do. Just flat like this on the table in front of me. I'm going to take the second plate and I'm going to set it aside for now. I'm going to take some of my beads and I'm going to just place a few of them, just, just a few, not too many, just a few, enough to make a little bit of sound in the first plate like this. And you want to be careful so you don't get beads or beans or rice or whatever you're using everywhere. Um, so you're going to take your plate and you're going to put your other plate on top like this. And you're going to match your holes up so that you can put your string through them. So I've matched up all my holes it's like this. You want to make sure you're holding it flat the whole time. You can set it down on the edge of your table to make it easier. And you take a string like this. And I'm going to hold it up here so you can see. And I'm just going to push my string through this hole. I'm going to, then I'm going to set my plate down. And I'm going to tie the string tight. Now you might want to ask your parent to help with this. Hold down so you can see. You're just gonna tie the string tight like this. I tie it two times and then I just leave it dangling down to make it look pretty. And we're gonna turn it. And you see I have my hole here. Take the string, put it through the hole like this. And I'm just going to tie it twice. And like I said, you want to make sure it's nice and tight so that your beads don't go out falling everywhere. And like I said, I'll talk to you in just a second about like you can skip this step and just staple it. Um, I'm going to add a couple staples just to make sure we don't lose any beads because we don't want them flying all over the floor. But we're just going to turn it and we're going to tie it like this. One more time. And then we do the last one. Same thing. Same hole that you matched up. Or even. 
and then tie it. One. I like to do two just to make sure it's not going to come apart. And you can practice tying your bows like you're tying shoes or however you want to tie it, but just as long as it stays together. So now this is pretty secure and I can play it. And you're welcome to decorate it with crayons or whatever. Like this. But if you don't have a hole punch and yarn at home and you do have a stapler, what you can do is you just take your plate on the side of your stapler and it's going to take strong hands and you can just staple it closed. Okay, so that is your plate tambourine. The other way that you can do it is that you can make one with bowls or a bigger plate, just something with the deeper thing. And I'm just gonna do this one with a stapler because it's faster. I just wanna show you the difference in, um, in the sound. So I'm gonna take about the same amount of beans or beans or rice, whatever you have. I just have like a little handful. I'll put it in the bowl here. And then I am going to it and I'm going to staple it. Now, like I said, you might need an adult's help for some of this, especially the bowls. They can be a little difficult. There we go. Oh, there's one. We're going to flip it all the way around to the other side. And again, just make sure you're holding it upright the whole time. Okay, so just like with the rope, I've spaced it out. I'm going to turn it sideways now. You can see I stapled here, here, on the top and on the bottom. You can also hear when I play this one, it gets louder because the beads have more space to rattle around and because it's deeper. So there's more space for that sound to reverberate, which makes it sound a little bit deeper than that one. I don't know if you can hear the difference, but listen. This one. You hear the difference in the pitch? This one's like a little bit higher. This one's a little bit lower. Yeah. And louder. So if you want a louder tambourine, you want the big bowl. And if you want a quieter tambourine, the narrow plates are a little better for that said you can decorate it um, and you can play it. You can play it by shaking it like this or by patting on it like this. And um, it's just really quick, easy little craft. Hopefully you could see all of that really well. Um, this is our favorite all right, so that's how you make a tambourine. I uh, showed you two ways to do it. The one way with the hole punches and the string. And like I said, you can always staple to make sure that there are no extra holes. But I like the string method just because it's easier and we don't have to get out the stapler if we don't really want to. Um, but make sure you have an adult with you for poking holes and for stapling. Um, so we don't want to hurt any little fingers. Um, and like I said, there are two ways to do it. Um, or as many ways as you can think of. So just let us know what you come up with and we hope that you guys have enjoyed um, doing story times and crafts with us and we'll see you next time. All right, bye-bye.